For y'all who don't know, I am from the South originally, and I was raised by Southern people from Alabama and Texas. And so I've lived in Pittsburgh longer than I've lived anywhere in my life, but sometimes you just don't get past your roots. You know, sometimes it just pops out when you least expect it, like when you're working on a sermon. And so I, sometimes I start with a title, or sometimes I start with content and move back to a title. But today, um, this week's sermon, I really felt like the title was Bless Your Heart 2020. <laughs> now, for those of you who are not Southern, I have a graph for you. So you can understand what this means. I did not make this graph, but it still holds true. Sometimes, what, when, do you have a Southern person say to you, bless your heart? It can mean many things, depending upon the tone and who it's coming from and what you just said. It could be, bless your heart, I really wish I could say what I'm really thinking. <laughs> or it could be like grandma talking to you, bless your heart, I'm, real, I'm praying for you. I really am praying for you. There is a, every once in a while a bless your heart that says, I don't care, but I feel like I should care. <laughs> My bless your heart normally falls into the next two categories. So you'll just have to use a gift of interpretation if I ever say it to you. Most of the time when I say bless your heart, I mean, you're pitiful, but you don't even know it. <laughs> bless your heart. Bless your heart. And then the other one, which I will ask often, when I say bless your heart, really what I'm asking is, can I bring you a casserole? A nice covered dish? Something to help you out because you clearly... You got some problems. So when I so when I say bless your heart 2020, I probably mean most of those. Because 2020 up to this point has been less than stellar. Depending upon how you look at things, less than stellar. I have eaten plenty of casseroles. I've done lots of praying. I really haven't cared even though sometimes I should. And I was many times pitiful and I didn't even know it. Myself, myself. Did you notice how I went to a southern accent and I normally, like normally every once in a while you can hear it, but now that I've got a southern thing up, I am just might as well just talk to my grandma. <laughs> I want to tell you something about 2020. And this week, this week has been something. I have had people, when you're in a position, sometimes people will call you because you're in a position, not because they think that you know anything, but they just want to talk to you and tell you what's going on in their life. And that's fine. That's totally cool because I do love to talk and I do love to minister. But the couple of things that I have gotten out of talking to people the last month or so at least is they are frustrated and they are upset and they are disappointed because they started out thinking they had some kind of control. If 2020 has taught us anything, it's that we're not in control. And if you're still trying to be in control, you are absolutely frustrated and disappointed without a doubt. We'll call this lessons from 2020 even though we're not finished yet. Dear Lord, we're not. Be okay with not knowing the who, what, when, where, and why. That's not my strong suit. I like to know. I like to plan. I like to have a plan. We've talked about this. I like to have, a, I like to have God's plan, and I love to have a backup plan. I like to have my sample plan for God, just in case he needed it. The Bible says, Proverbs 16, 9 says, we can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. Amen. Yeah. The Bible says, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't depend on your own understanding or your own questions or your own answers or your own set of control. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Isaiah. Just throwing some scriptures. Isaiah 46, 10. Only I can tell you the future before it even happens. Everything I plan is going to come to pass. I do whatever I wish. That's God talking. Amen. In case you Amen. needed to know. Mm -hmm. The most, it's, it's, if you are on social media at all, there's a funny little meme going out there that the most useless thing that's happened in 2020 is a 2020 planner. That's the most useless item that you bought was a planner to go for 2020. And I think that is funny because I'm a planner kind of person. Until it doesn't work anymore and you only have until March and then you have nothing from March to November. And then you don't know when to put something in. I'm like, I'm a, here comes 2021. It's around the corner. It's knocking on the door. Do we even bother? Do we bother doing a planner? 
Do we buy that? Do we just try to find a, uh, you know, a free one online? Do we just go back to the old notes, the old school way of doing it, and put down a notebook? It's kind of hard to tell. One thing, lessons from 2020, one thing that we have learned is God is not bound. According to the scriptures we just read, he's not bound by human timelines. Amen. We get an amen to that and a thank you, Jesus, that he is not bound to human timelines. Because how many feel a little behind this year? Does anyone feel a little behind or that you were robbed of something? That something that should have happened that you had planned for and the way that you thought that it was going to happen just didn't happen that way? Lessons from 2020, you have to follow him regardless of your schedule. Do you notice how he interrupts? And this is in life in general, not just 2020. But sometimes you're going through and you're going through your life and you're doing what you think that you're supposed to do and you have a time set aside, for example, to work on a sermon, okay? Because you gotta get up on Sunday morning because Sunday morning's coming. And Sunday morning's coming whether you are prepared or not. So you have time in your week that you're gonna work on your sermon. And you sit down, and this is going to be the day, and here you go. But your phone rings, and you are interrupted. But guess what? Sometimes the interruption is the thing that you were supposed to be doing to begin with. Sometimes the interruption of what has happened in 2020, there is nothing about what is happening with the pandemic and death and destruction that was brought to us by our Savior and our Lord, our God, because John 10, 10, the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But I came that you will have life and life more abundantly. So the pandemic, the sickness, the disease, the unrest, God or the devil, absolutely the devil. He doesn't have it. God doesn't have sickness to get. So having established that, in the overall weeks and days of our lives, days of our lives, that we have our preconceived notion of what is supposed to happen and what our graduation year is supposed to look like and what our first year in high school is supposed to look like and what our first year of retirement is supposed to look like and what our first year after graduation is supposed to look like and what our first year of being in something that we work so hard to get for is supposed to look like. And that has been stopped. So what I want you to do is I want you to take this as a time to think about God's plan. To think about, we have things that we do on the outside, but the purpose of who you are, when you are, and how you are is different than the, than the, the roads and the walls that we have may, may have created for ourselves. The good thing that has happened in 2020 is that we've had to reevaluate and reassess and reprioritize things. And I hope that you've done that up to now, but if you haven't, there's still time. There's absolutely still time because the thing that should be number one and the thing that never changed was God's presence with you. His desire to be your answer to your questions. Amen. His desire to be the shoulder that you lean on. The one that you go to, the one that you cry to, the one that when you don't understand, you're like, God, what just happened? I am thrown for a loop. What, what, what now? What now? Because if you didn't have a solid purpose going into 2020, and then if all the rest of the stuff was stripped away, and your support system was no longer able to be there for you, because maybe they're not okay either then you had no other choice but to rely on God. I'm hoping that's what you did. But if not, it's, he's there anytime. Anytime. It says there that the presence of God is not scheduled, but it is invited. And that is true. He is waiting for you to just say, hey, I can't. But you can. Amen. I have scripture on the fact that you can, and I so can. I have months of empty calendars that say, I can, but you can. Sometimes God doesn't make sense. And again, I want to repeat, what has happened in 2020 with all the negative that has come to us was not brought to us by God. But there is a scripture that says, Romans 8, 28, all things work together for the good of those that love the Lord. Sometimes it doesn't compute with your head, but you follow anyway. 
if I'm going to take you to a, a long scripture, but I want you to listen to it and tell me if it doesn't sound just a smidge like 2020 to you. In Numbers 9, 15 through 20, this is talking about the Israelites in the desert, right? So on the day of the tabernacle, the tent of the covenant law was set up and a cloud covered it. And from evening till morning, the cloud above the tabernacle looked like fire, which makes sense. Then <clears throat> that is how it continued to be. The cloud covered it and at night it looked like fire. Whenever the cloud lifted from above the tent, the Israelites set out. That means they moved. Wherever the cloud settled, the Israelites encamped. So it's like GPS, right? It's not too hard. You just follow the directions. If that little car on your screen says turn right, then you turn right. If the car on the screen says turn left, then you turn left. If the cloud moves, then you move. Because maybe it wasn't the way that you thought it was supposed to go. At the Lord's command, the Israelites set out. And at his command, they encamped. That's a good idea, by the way. Go when he says go and stop when he says stop. As long as the cloud stayed over the tabernacle, they remained in the camp. When? <laughs> when the cloud remained over the tabernacle a long time, the Israelites obeyed the Lord's order and didn't set out. Like, do you see this pattern? Sometimes the cloud was over the tabernacle. It's very worried. Sometimes the cloud was over the tabernacle only a few days. At the Lord's command, they encamp. Because if it's only a few days, then you stay a few days. And then, as at his command, they would set out when it would move. Sometimes the cloud stayed only from evening till morning. And when it lifted in the morning, then they moved. Whether by day or by night, whether the cloud, whenever the cloud lifted, they set out. Whether the cloud stayed over the tabernacle for two days, or a month, or a year, the Israelites would remain in camp and not set out. But when it lifted, then they set out. That's a very long way to say, follow God. You don't want to be out of the presence and the protection of the Lord. Because it is still available. Maybe it doesn't look like it's still available right now because there's so much death and destruction that's happening in the world. But over your head, because you are his chosen people, he has a will and a plan for you. And he knew what was going to happen in 2020. Mm -hmm. He knew what was going to happen tomorrow. He knew what was going to happen in March. He knows what's going to happen next March. He knows vaccine, no vaccine. Ele president elect, no president. He knows the beginning from the end. And in the scheme of eternity, or even in the scheme of your life, this time that's happening right now is going to pass anyway. Amen. Put yourself under his movement and go where he says to go. So how do we do that? The Bible talks about waiting for the Lord. You look to the Lord in your time of trouble. You seek after God. You seek his will before any human aid. That's what the definition of waiting for the Lord is. And then we have some, some scriptures that we all probably have heard before. Isaiah 40, 31. That those who wait, wait meaning seek him before any human aid. Okay, so let's put our definition in there. Those who seek the Lord before any human aid, who expect, this is amplified, you can tell, who expect, who look for, who hope in him, they will gain new strength and renew their power. They're going to lift up their wings and rise close to God like the eagles, rising toward the sun. They'll run and not become weary. They're going to walk and they're not going to faint. Isaiah 64.4. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard. Isn't that kind of what it feels like right now, though? Men have not heard or perceived by the ear, nor has any eye seen. Stop right there. If you stop it right there, it kind of describes 2020. Like, we haven't seen, in our lifetime, we've never seen anything like this year, right? We've never seen anything like the destruction that's happening. We've never seen anything like the discontent that's happening, the disease. And I'm talking about disease physically. I'm talking about not being in ease. Because we're at rest as a nation, as a world. <laughs> but God, for since the beginning of the world, men have not heard or perceived by the ear, nor has any eye seen any God besides you who acts for the one who waits for him. Amen. 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 God acts for the one who waits for him, for the one who seeks his will before any human aid. For the one who... Instead of consulting CNN or Fox, goes to the B-I-B-L-E. 
to figure out what is happening. Because did you know that even if you watch 10 hours a day of news, you're not gonna change anything? <laughs> Be informed, know what's happening, and pray. But that doesn't take too long. There's no reason to watch the 10 hours and figure out who said what about what. It'll still be there tomorrow, and guess what? It'll probably still be the same news tomorrow. Because that's what, and it's not what you're focusing on, and you're focusing on the problem rather than the answer, isn't going to get you in a good place. It's not going to get you out of the depression that the devil wants to throw at you, through the suicidal tendencies that the devil wants to throw at you, through the just flat giving up that the devil wants. Because you know what? There is kind of like a glass that is, that is full. And through 2020, this glass has been coming up and up and up and up, and it's almost full. And now it doesn't take much to have it overflow. It doesn't take much. You throw in a job loss, you throw in a, a diagnosis from a doctor, you throw in a fight with your kids, you throw in your 401k, uh, you took it out too soon. You throw in, you, look at the price of gas. You know, on any of these things, and it just comes up, and it comes up, and it comes up. And if you don't ever empty it, you are going to overflow. You're going to explode. If you don't take the sun and put it on there, and that sun starts to heat it up and evaporate all that negative that's happening, and you get down to, your, to a level that it doesn't feel like it's horrible anymore. And this side being the S-O-N, not the S-U-N. And you feel like, you know what? I have a little bit of room to breathe. I'm not walking around holding my glass, hoping that it doesn't tip, hoping that something else doesn't happen, hoping that it doesn't overflow. Because then you, once you call God into the situation and he takes those worries and those anxieties and he says, you know, I know, I'm aware, I know what's happening in the world, but still, I'm still God. I'm still the God that delivered people in the Bible. I'm still the God who delivered you out of your last problem that you have. Ecclesiastes. I like this one. Because if you are a planner, and if you are somebody who likes to predict what's going to happen and then make decisions based off of the past, and what has happened before, and what could happen in the future, and all the markers. I live with an engineer, and this is what he does very, very well. He also happens to be a lot of God, so this isn't all of our trouble in life, but he loves a spreadsheet. Amen. So much, see, he's back there. Hallelujah. He loves it so much because it makes sense. And you can determine trends, and you can determine you can make some assumptions based on those trends, and that's all true. That's absolutely all true. But sometimes, if you wait for the perfect time, if you wait for all the craziness to stop, you're going to be stuck for it. It's not going to ever be a perfect time. The time that it's perfect is when God says that it's perfect. Ecclesiastes 11, 4 through 5 says, farmers who wait for the perfect weather, they're never gonna plan. And they watch every cloud, they will never harvest. Just as you cannot understand the path of the wind or the mystery of a tiny baby growing in a mother's womb, so you cannot understand the activity of God who does small things. So what we're going to do, we're going to stop looking at the forecast. We're going to know where we are and be in the world but not of the world. We're going to know what's happening around us but that's not what makes us base our decisions on what we're going to do. Guess what? We're, we're, we're ending this year pretty soon. We're in December right now. January 1st is coming. And everyone acts like it's this big magical day and everything's just gonna poof be so much better. Newsflash, it's not. Because there has been destruction and pain and suffering in the world since the beginning of time. And until God takes us up, that's still going to be true. Amen. But how it affects you doesn't have to change and it doesn't have to wait until 2021. Because let me ask you this. If you've got everything that's happening that's around you that is terrible, 
but God is providing for you. And from that provision, you can give out. And you're just walking along your path. And you've got the fire at night. You've got the cloud by day. you got your man. You're walking around. And you see someone who needs something. And you can freely give because you are blessed to that level. You are blessed that you can be the shoulder for somebody to cry on. That you can be the way that you're pull, stre stretching down and pulling somebody up. Because people, that's the purpose. If you wanted to know what the purpose of 2020 was, and you want to know what the purpose of your life is, in general, it's to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Amen. And when Jesus was here, and there was somebody who had a need, then he moved to that need. He moved to that need based not on how good they were, or how bad they were, but based on what he had to give. Mm -hmm. Without qualification, without making sure that they were good enough to receive, without making sure they came from the right side of the tracks, without making sure that they were approved by the synagogue, he didn't go after those people. People were coming to him because they knew that he had an answer. And that is what sometimes gets you weary when you are in this position. Because so many people come and you understand why Jesus went away. And he went to pray. And it was three o'clock in the morning before he, re he met up with his disciples again and had to rescue them again. You cannot pour from an empty cup, right? You have to fill up. And the way that you do it is you simply talk to God before you talk to other humans. Amen. If you lose your job, you talk to God. Okay, Dad, what now? I said, well, you got a plan. You get a little sniffle. <laughs> That's easy. I have scripture after scripture on that. I know what your plan is. Your plan is healing. Your plan is that I will live and not die. You, know, you get a bad doctor's report. You know what? I'm pretty sure cancer isn't, having cancer doesn't have to be down here. I know the end, even though we may not be walking through. I know where I'm going. Not based on where I am right now. So I've got the answer to 2021. Okay, here it is. Are you ready? Get your phones out. Super deep. <laughs> Super. When you wait on the Lord and you trust in him, and you're willing to give up what your plans and your preconceived notions are, and then you go to him, and you ask him, hey, God, what? What am I going to do? What's the plan here? Here's what he's going to say every time. God led him in two different ways in the Bible. Two. Okay? Do something or do nothing. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's the answer to 2021. You're going to pray about a certain situation, and God's going to tell you, hey, listen, you're going to do this. You're going to reach out to kids that need presents this year. You're going to reach out to the person you haven't seen in church for a while just to make sure that they're doing okay. Or you're going to do nothing. You're going to sit there, and you're going to wait. And you're going to trust in God's plan more than you trusted in your own plan. Because you doing something, have you, don't listen, CJ. Have you ever had a kid or seen a kid, and they got themselves into some trouble? That's my kid. I have one. And they got themselves into some trouble in some way. And let's say they were young. And let's say they spilled paint. So obedient. Let's say they spilled paint. This never actually really happened. But let's say they spilled paint. And they're like, oh, Mom told me not to be standing up and doing whatever and acting crazy. And now I've spilled the paint. And now it's on the ground. And now it's everywhere. And now they're trying to clean it up on their own. And they're trying to fix their own mess. And so as a parent, once you find it, because of course the mess is still going to be there. Because they don't know. They don't know how to fix things. They don't know how to undo the bad that they just did. The accident that happened, the unexpected thing. They have no idea how to fix that. And you go in, and now it's all over them. And it's on the tablecloth that they took off the table to wipe it up. And it's dragged through the hallway. And into the bathroom. And onto the sink. And somehow on the mirror. And then they had to pee, and now it's on the toilet. And it's all over them. 
And your first thought is, if you had just come to me, if you had just done nothing, if you had just waited on me to come, I would have eventually found you. You could have called to me and I would have answered you. And I'd have shown you great and mighty things about Clorox wipes that you did not know. Amen. Amen. <laughs> it is very seldom you get yourself into a situation you can get yourself back out of in life as grown-ups. Even at, I mean, of course, as a kid, but even in grown-ups. Because we need God. Amen. We need him to direct our ways. We need him to tell us to follow the cloud of his, his promptings to say when to pick up and move and when to be still. Amen. When to go and when not to. Two more scriptures as we go. Exodus 14, 13 through 14. Moses answered the people and said, hey, don't be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance of your Lord that the Lord's going to bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you're never going to see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to stand still. Do nothing. Do nothing. Stand still and see the deliverance of the Lord. Or, or... 2 Samuel 5.19, David. David talked to God a lot, most of the time. And when he did, he was on the right path. So David inquired of the Lord, Shall I go attack the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hands? That's a real good idea. If you ever plan on setting out to do something different, different and new, ask God about it. Because why? Because we're going to wait on the Lord. Wait means to consult him more than what you would consult your mama, your daddy, grandma, the deacons, you consult God. And the Lord answered him and said, go. I will surely deliver the Philistines into your hands. If you move, you move with God. Amen. And we have a promise. The promise is, Psalm 25, 3. No one who trusts in you will ever be disgraced. That Y should be a capital Y. No one who trusts in you, Lord, will ever be disgraced. No one who put your trust in Jesus, in the promptings of what God has for you, it's going to be okay. If you remember nothing else about the sermon, remember this. Ask God. What is happening around you is going to change faster than any news station can cover it. What's happening around your life can change. What's happening in your relationships can change. Go to him because he will answer you and show you Jeremiah 29, no, 33, 3. That's the one. Jeremiah 33, 3, God's phone number, call to me and I will answer you and I'll show you great mighty things you don't know because you can't. You could, you, if you had thousands of hours in 2019 to predict what was going to happen in 2020, you'd have gotten it wrong. <laughs> Absolutely. Amen. You can't reason it. You can't think it through. You have to trust and rely. But there is solace in that. Because if you're following after the cloud, he's never going to lead you into the ditch. He's never going to be like, oops, didn't see that coming. Sorry, buddy. But you, are, you, <laughs> you have patience in your life. And you know that regardless of what's happening on the outside, you are constantly constant because of whose you are. Because you know that regardless of what mess there is, your daddy's going to get you out. Amen. Because he knew it. He sent his son to die for you. He knew we were going to mess this up. He knew that in the history of life, there would not be somebody who didn't mess something up in their life. Amen. So good news, you qualify, and so do I. Amen. And there's nothing bad enough that you can do that he will not be there for you. Or he's like, you know what? You crossed the line. Not this time. That sin actually... Too big. You knew better and you still did it. And so, my hand's off. Did you know that he has more than one plan for your life? Amen. Did you know that he has, there is a perfect plan for your life, but if you mess it up, he's still got the pen. <laughs> Writing out the new plan for you. Amen. Because he, there was a plan the whole time, you just didn't know it. Sometimes nothing is something. 
when we wait and we rest and we rely on what God is telling us. And if you don't know and you don't hear anything, then just don't do it. Don't move. Don't move until you do know. Don't, and if in that time, renew yourself that you are the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen. Renew your mind to the fact that it is about how good he is, not about how good you are. Because when you're sitting there doing nothing, feeling like a sloth, you don't have a lot of confidence, right? Amen. That's a good time to get, those, to get that word in you and to build up and to be able to start the next battle. Because it's almost like, have you ever seen race horses that are in a pen before they open them up and let them race? And they're there and they're waiting. And they're like back and forth. And they're waiting and they're looking ahead because they can't look at anybody else. They've got the blinders on, right? Which might be helpful for you to use. <laughs> and you look at the end and you look at where you're going and all you need is that gate to open up. That's what we should be like at 2021. That's what we should be like on December 10th. That's what we should be like at the stroke of midnight tonight. Amen. If you've been given the gift of time in 2020, I'm hoping that you're using it well to bring into your <coughs> mind who you are and whose you are and what that makes available to you. It makes peace and love and prosperity and healing and joy. Because I tell you what, you know, all the things that we talk about Christmas, it's a Merry Christmas, joy to the world, it's bringing the good news. Man, does the world need that more now than ever? Yes, we're about to come into a season of Christmas that at least the topic comes up. You don't have to shout down people's throats, but you know, they're coming to you. If you are out talking to anyone and you don't even have to be saying Jesus, 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 but your peace and your love and your joy and your stability in the midst of all these storms are drawing people to you. And he's gonna be right there to give you what he needs them to have. Amen. So you don't even have to worry about it. You don't, and that is what I had to share today. God bless your heart, 2020, that was it.